I'm Alice Loxton and I present documentaries over on History Hit TV. If you're passionate about all things history, sign up to History Hit TV. It's like Netflix, but just for history. We've got hours of ad-free documentaries about all aspects of the past. You can get a huge discount from History Hit TV. Make sure you check out the details below and use the code ABSOLUTEHISTORY, all one word when you sign up. Now, on with the show. This colorful valley town in Mexico looks like a painting with blocks of bright colors dancing up the hillsides. The name of this town translates to hilly place of frogs because I guess the hills kind of look like frogs. Guanajuato City has so much to be curious about. Guanajuato City is the capital of the state of Guanajuato, which is in central Mexico. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples lived here, near the river at the bottom of the valley. Although, where is that river today? Instead, in that same valley, today you see gorgeous Baroque architecture, Spanish colonial churches and public buildings, and postcard perfect, brightly colored houses and lovely winding streets which never would have been here if it weren't for one really important shiny object and a couple of donkeys. So here's what I'm curious about in Guanajuato City, Mexico. How did silver shape a city? Why are these streets and alleys so winding and this particular alley so narrow? How do we walk on water along this main street? What does this church have to do with the King of Spain, and why is it yellow? Why are the columns on this church so important, and why is it connected to this university? What is the Paris Opera House and this Paris train station doing in the middle of Mexico? What's so important about this grain storehouse? And the most curious question of all, who the heck is this giant overlooking Guanajuato? Guanajuato City's curious history begins as many cities do, with its source of life. How did the river help shape the city? Oh, this is a good question. The river, you know, for all that civilization, is the water. Water is the life. So Guanajuato lived for many centuries for the river. They drain the water for the river, and the river cross all the city across all the city for oh, a lot of centuries. But if you want to take a dip into Guanajuato River today, that's going to be a challenge because it's not here anymore. Why? Well, because silver and other precious minerals were discovered in these hills. In fact, between the 16th and the 18th centuries, Guanajuato was one of the top silver mining centers in the entire world. And where there is wealth to be had, a European colony will soon be formed. So, Spain established their colonies here in the 16th and 17th centuries. But what does all that have to do with the missing river? Well, it has a little something to do with that silver, those froggy hills, and some donkeys. The mines were in that mountain in the back, and they brown the minerals with donkeys. From where the mines were, From which were mines. up in the hills, on the backs of donkeys, yeah, yeah. down to, to the river. Yeah, to the to do the process wow. of mineral. But eventually, the threat of flooding from that river threatened the donkeys' little feet, and I guess more importantly, the precious silver mines, too. So, the river was covered over and moved underground. And even later, those underground river tunnels became underground streets for cars and even the occasional brave pedestrian or two. And above ground, while you may not be able to swim in the river anymore, you can still follow its path. All the streets of the city, they were, uh, they were small rivers. Oh, they all gotcha. came together. So the river, the, the shape of the river is now the shape of the streets. The streets yeah, are there because right. of the, the shape you're of right, the river. You're right. That's why Guanajuato is like this, you know. We call it Arabic plants, but nobody designed the city. It was growing very natural, like a flower, like a plant. The fact that these streets and alleys used to be rivers and streams explains why they are so darn winding. High heels are not recommended here. 
and some of those winding streets are decorated with beautiful artwork. Guanajuato is known for its beautiful little alleyways that follow that original river and streams. It is also known for its wonderful artists. Now, along this particular wall, uh, graffiti artists were displaying their works, and this particular homeowner did not like that so much. So he painted over all the graffiti and added these beautiful religious paintings. I'm just going to guess that this particular painting was done as a warning to those graffiti guys. Which brings us to the wonderful art scene and art history here in Guanajuato. Today it is known for its year-round arts festivals, like the famous Festival Internacional Cervantino. And one of the most famous Mexican artists in history was born right here in Guanajuato City. Diego Rivera is known for his brightly colored murals that depicted the life and often the struggles of the working class, and also of his fellow native Mexicans. His works were often controversial, making statements on the social and political issues of his time. Many of Diego Rivera's works are displayed around the world, from his murals to his cubist paintings, but Rivera was born here in Guanajuato City. And you can visit his birthplace and first home, which has now been turned into a museum, with a permanent exhibit of some of his original works and sketches. So it's really no surprise that Diego Rivera's hometown is still awash in color and art, from the rooftops to those brightly painted alleyways. The alleys here in Guanajuato are of course known for being very winding and narrow, but none quite as narrow as this. This is the legendary Callejón del Beso with a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet history to it. If you look up and you see how close those two balconies are, well, legend has it that two feuding families lived there and the daughter and son of each family were close enough to kiss. So today, if you sneak a kiss here in the alley, then you will have good luck. Now that you've sneaked a smooch, let's scooch along the path of that underwater river, fittingly named Calle Subterranea, to the main town square, Plaza de la Paz, the Plaza of Peace. Here in Plaza de la Paz, you will find two very important women. On the statue in the middle of the plaza is a goddess representing peace. Behind her is the Basilica, dedicated to Our Lady of Guanajuato. The Basilica of Our Lady of Guanajuato is one of the grandest monuments to its Spanish colonial history. When Spain established its colony here, it of course brought its Spanish customs, including its religion and its architecture. And this particular bit of architecture has some beautifully curious features. It is set on a hill to make it seem even more magnificent from below. And from above, it seems to be elevated above the entire city. Construction began in 1671, but it was improved upon over the years. That impressive dome is Baroque, painted a vibrant red. The entrance is made of local pink sandstone with carvings of the saints, but why is the main part of the church yellow? They think that this is one of the original, original color, has a cure, you know, powerful yellow, orange, very, it's the color of the ground. Oh, so okay. that's, that's identified with this time. So, awash with the colors of the earth, the basilica reaches into the heavens overlooking her city. But the most curious feature of all is inside the basilica, a sacred artifact believed to have been hidden away in a cave for 800 years. Coming from Spain, from Granada, was, was a present of, a, of the king of Spain to Guanajuato. So it's dedicated to the miners, the people from the city. That present is this statue of the Virgin Mary, which according to legend was hidden away in a cave when the Moors invaded Spain back in the 700s. And then about 800 years later, in 1557, King Philip II of Spain gifted this precious little statue to the miners of Guanajuato. That ought to tell you how much Spain valued that silver and how much Guanajuato still values this sacred statue. She took care for us to the city for, for centuries, for centuries. So everybody who lives in Guanajuato we are very devotion to, to this virgin. So that's the heart 
all religions of, of everybody who live in Guanajuato. While Our Lady is revered as the protector of the city, our next glorious church was left abandoned for years. But why? This is the beautiful Campania de Jesus Church built in 1765. It is one of the oldest churches still standing here in Guanajuato. Just like Guanajuato Basilica, the Templo de la Campania de Jesus, or simply La Campania, is a result of the wealth of the silver mines. It was built by the Jesuits, which is where we get its name, Campania de Jesus, or Society of Jesus, as the Jesuit order was called. The Jesuits were very powerful in Spain, so it's no surprise that they would establish such a monumental church here in New Spain, which included Mexico and its other colonies in the Americas. While the Jesuits built many churches throughout Mexico, the Campania de Jesus is one of the largest and most grand. It remains one of the most beautiful examples of Baroque architecture throughout Central and South America. But it's not just any type of Baroque. Yeah. There's uh, some certain features that are here that tell us why it's a Mexican Baroque, not just plain old everyday well, Baroque. Something that we can difference between all the Baroque is the color that you can see. We call it estipite. Yeah, estipite. Yeah. Estipite, right? like that. An estipite column is a uniquely Spanish type of column. It's kind of like a pedestal or an inverted cone, wider at the top and narrower at the base. It is typical of Chirigoresque architecture. Chirigoresque is Mexican Baroque or Rococo, where more is more. If you think you've added on enough detail, enough faces, flowers, and flourishes, well, then pile on some more and you'll have Chirigoresque. And as if the impressive and imposing beauty of the church weren't enough, when the church was built, there was an entire seminary built here too. But where is it? This is the dome of the church we were just standing inside. So as you leave the church, there's always been this beautiful courtyard here. And then as you look up, you can see the courtyard leads right into what used to be the Jesuits seminary. Now today, that's actually part of the university. But you see all that beautiful ornate uh, entryways there? Those actually came from different churches at the silver mines. So this area for centuries has been not only sacred, but quite curious. And one of those miners' churches is this one, Templo La Valenciana. It sits near the La Valenciana mine, once the biggest source of silver in the area. It was built in the late 18th century, and just like the Jesuits' church, it also is Chirigoresque in style and uses that lovely local pink limestone. Inside, there are gorgeous golden altarpieces, ivory and wooden carvings, and beautiful paintings. But here's the best part. Legend says that the owner built this church as a thank you to his patron saint for making him rich on all that silver. <laughs> now back down to the main part of town and to those minor church facades here on the university. This building was originally the Jesuit seminary. So how and why did it become a public university? Well, because in 1767, just two years after the church was built, Spain thought the Jesuits were becoming too rich and powerful. So they kicked all the Jesuits out of the Spanish colonies, including Guanajuato. So the Campania de Jesus Church lay abandoned for years, and later the Jesuit seminary became the University of Guanajuato. And just when you thought you'd climbed enough hills and steps in Guanajuato, of course, there's even more steps leading up to the university, Guanajuato's Temple to Knowledge. But aren't they lovely? From a temple of knowledge to a temple to the arts, we now head to the center of town, where Guanajuato's architecture tells its history. Here in the center of town, there is beautiful European-inspired architecture everywhere you look. One of the most beautiful examples is right here at Teatro Juarez, built in 1873. There are these gorgeous allegories to the arts all along the rooftop, including music and theater. Why? Well, this theater was meant to be the Paris Opera House for the city. 
Just like the Paris Opera House and other opera houses in Europe, Teatro Juarez has neoclassical and Baroque elements with muses adorning its rooftop. Construction began under architect Jose Noriega, but he didn't finish. And why he didn't finish makes the Teatro Juarez a tangible reminder of a turbulent time in Guanajuato's history. You know, he lived in one time in the Mexico, has a lot of problems. War between the liberals, uh, conservatives, people, a lot of chains, a lot of wars. So it was very unstable time. So he did the design, start and almost finish, but sadly, to many circumstances, the money was gone. But finally, and thankfully, in 1903, the curtain went up in Teatro Juarez. And then this gorgeous theater became so much more than just a venue for the arts. It became a status symbol for the city. Guanajuato leave it a, a historical moment very important because Mexico City has a beautiful building like Bellas Artes that was already built. So we are in provincia, we call, you know, the outside to the capital. So the, the cities around the big capitals need to be grown. That's true, to compete with the yeah, big cities. Say, we're here, yeah. we're just as important. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But in order to make that statement, which style to use? Well, how about all of them? Guanajuato, in this time, uh, has a different style of architecture. Like you can see here, we call a uh, eclectic style. What it does mean? It does mean the, the, the influence of the past is the historical style. That's right, while outside we have Roman and Greek, inside we have Asian and Moorish elements. And then upstairs, we're back to those European styles that look straight out of Paris. The theater enjoyed its heyday during the fin de siècle, when ladies and gentlemen dressed to the nines to enjoy an evening of theater. After 100 years, we still have in the place. It has a particular spirit. So you can feel uh, some sensation yeah. of the history and the beauty yeah. all together. So see, this is beauty, but it's a memory. Next, from elegant to practical, we now visit another impressive building where you can buy your daily groceries. I can every day oh. to buy the newspaper, had a uh, seafood, you know, is one of the, my favorite places I, because my school and my war is yes, yes here. So it's part of my, my walking uh, Part of day. your daily routine, yeah, like, yeah. like everyone who lives yeah, here. Yeah. The Mercado Hidalgo is part of everyone's daily life here in Guanajuato. And it has been since it opened in 1910, the centennial year of Mexican independence. But this market looks a little curious, doesn't it? From its grand archway entrance with ornate lighting fixtures and its soaring 230-foot-high, 115-foot-wide barrel vaulted ceiling. Look, it's like a train station. Like the Paris train station? Yeah, yeah, called the Paris train uh, station. With the iron yeah, and then the, yeah. the glass ceiling. Yeah, the same, the same, okay. the same. Oh, that's interesting. So a little bit of Paris here in the yeah. middle of Mexico. Well, you know that we had a lot of influence with France. They were some of the architects go to study there. They need to go to study there. And they come here and they, they do all their they beautiful see, work. They bring yeah. all the, the new ways. So just like those Paris train stations of the late 19th century, this new construction technique was all about the iron and glass. While iron may seem a simple material today, during the Industrial Age, iron made sky-high buildings possible for the first time. Because it was such an incredible innovation, it was exalted as a work of art, which is why it was often left bare, in Paris train stations and in a little something called the Eiffel Tower. And that exaltation continued across the Atlantic, here at the Mercado Hidalgo. It's one of the most beautiful buildings that we have here in, in Guanajuato. There's room for all the stuff, so you do you're more right, shopping. Right. You have to have yeah. room for stuff. <laughs> you're right, you're right. 
Mercado Hidalgo is named after Father Miguel Hidalgo, whose name you will also see here on our final curious landmark here in Guanajuato. And for that, we go up another hill. Well, of course, there's another hill. Today, this important building is a museum, but its history is full of important events and legends that shaped Guanajuato and all of Mexico. It's very important because here is our independence of Mexico against Spain. This is the El Jandiga de Granaditas, named simply for its original use, a grain storehouse. But it goes down in history because of what happened here in 1810. In 1810, the Mexican Revolution against Spain was beginning. In its earliest battle, legendary independence leader Father Miguel Hidalgo storms Guanajuato with his rebels behind him. So, Spanish troops and the wealthy Spanish families barricaded themselves inside this building. Which brings us to an incredible legend about this awesome giant. This is El Pipila, the town hero. And what the legend says he did sounds like straight out of an action hero movie. First, he straps a large flat stone to his back. He put a stone in his back, a pavement stone, a big one, and go with the fire and burn the door so that all the Indians can get in. But you know, the part, sad part is they kill everybody inside. You know, it was a terrible massacre. So th that was a sad part of, of this, this uh, building. After this battle at the Alhandiga, the rest of the city rebelled too. As you might imagine, this did not go over so well with the Spanish. So the history gets even more gruesome. The Spanish were very angry for that. Took Hidalgo and his friend and cut it ahead and put it in, in this corner of the building where you can see there the name. So everybody can see they, they don't should do that against the, the imperial or the Spanish. Much later, to honor these four rebel heroes, their names were proudly inscribed on those very same four corners. So much sadness, so much bravery, and such a pivotal moment in the history of Mexican independence. But it's really hard to imagine all that violence today as you stroll through this serene and cheery town. From a colorful city in a valley that was carved out by a river that isn't there anymore. Because of shiny silver found in these hills that sort of look like frogs, which gave the city its name. To a spooky and creative solution to graffiti and another alley just perfect for Romeo and Juliet. To the home of a famous hometown artist who used his talent and a whole lot of color to express his beliefs about the world and about his beloved Mexico. To a grand theater fit for Paris and a Parisian train station to match. And a church dedicated to the lady of the town and another church dedicated to a wealthy and powerful religious order who, let's be honest, had really great taste and who valued education, so built a temple to learning, complete with a lot of steps leading up to that temple, whose side entrance is decorated with the entrances of churches built just for those silver miners, who were so important to Guanajuato and to New Spain that the King of Spain himself gave them this precious icon. And finally, on just another hill is a simple storehouse, whose history isn't simple at all, that gave rise to the legend of a larger-than-life town hero, whose larger-than-life statue is always protecting his city. So, from silver to Spain to simply saintly, Guanajuato City has so much to be curious about. Thank you for joining us on our educational journey and hopefully now you're even more curious about the who, what, where, why, when, and how of Guanajuato City. As they say here, te esperamos pronto en Guanajuato.